Welcome back, my dear student teachers, to the course Knowledge and Curriculum. We are now into the second unit, Concept and Nature of Curriculum. This is the fourth module, which talks about the role of representation and non-representation of various groups in curriculum planning. This is Dr. V. Girija, Professor and Head for the Department of School of Education from Bayes Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Studies. The role of representation, it, uh, it involves the inclusivity and diversity, cultural sensitivity, empowerment, global competence, etc. Let us look in detail into inclusivity and diversity. The representation ensures that diverse perspectives, cultures and experiences are included in the curriculum. This fosters inclusivity and helps students relate to the content, promoting a sense of belonging. Cultural sensitivity representing various social groups acknowledges the rich cultural uh, tapestry of India. It helps in developing curriculum content that is culturally sensitive and relevant to the diverse uh, backgrounds of students. Empowerment inclusive representation empowers marginalized groups by recognizing and valuing their contributions. It can inspire students from underrepresented backgrounds and contribute to a more equitable society. Global competence. Representation prepares students for a global, globalized world by exposing them to a variety of perspectives and this helps in fostering a broader understanding of different social, cultural and historical contexts. The marginalization and stereotyping. The non-representation, now we are looking into the non-representation of uh, uh, in the curriculum uh, presentation. Marginalization and stereotyping. Non-representation can lead to the marginalization of certain social groups, reinforcing stereotypes and limiting students' understanding of the diversity within society. Exclusion and disengagement. When certain groups are consistently left out of the curriculum, it can lead to disengagement among students who do not see themselves or their communities reflected in the learning materials. Inequitable education. Non-representation contributes to educational inequities as students may not receive a well-rounded education that acknowledges the contributions of all communities. This can perpetuate, this can perpetuate social disparities. Role of non-representation may lead to missed learning opportunities. Ignoring the representation of various social groups means missing out on valuable learning opportunities. Different perspectives contribute to a more comprehensive understanding of subject and societal issues. Issues of curriculum at a school education level. The curriculum reforms have been taken up by the Government of India through NCERT and Developed National Curriculum Framework in the year 2005. The major issues of the curriculum at school education level have been discussed and that information loaded textbooks and memory based examinations, dull routine and board teaching and road systems of learning and no clear connection between the concerns, aims and curricular contents. The pedagogy and the view on knowledge also remain somewhat not well defined. The following are the guiding principles reflected in the NCF 2005 document for the undertaking curricular reforms and development of syllabus and textbooks and will be considered for state level curriculum reforms and textbook development. Connecting knowledge to life outside the school, ensuring that learning is shifted away from road methods and enriching the curriculum to provide for overall development of children rather than remaining in the textbook centric, making examinations more flexible and integrated into classroom life and nurturing an overriding identity informed by caring concerns within the democratic polity of the country and during the struggle for in independence it was realized that the curriculum introduced in India as a result of Macaulay's Minute 19, 1835 it was not accord with the deeds and inspirations of India a major effort towards the reform of education and curriculum was made by Gandhiji when he propounded the basic system of education besides craft physical and social environment were also considered very important in school curriculum. Reforms recommended by different bodies and agencies of education. 
The University Education Commission in the year 1952 and 53 recommended a diversified curriculum with some core subjects at the higher secondary stage. The Secondary Education Commission in the year 1964-66 considered the working of the entire system of education in the country and made suggestions for restructuring the curriculum in the light of explosion of knowledge. The recommendations of the Education Commission led to the formulation of National Policy of Education in the year 1968 which envisaged the 10 plus 2 plus 3 pattern of education for the entire country. In 1975, a new curriculum for the pattern of 10 plus 2 plus 3 was system was formulated by the NCRT. In 1977, the Ishwar Bhai Patel Committee appointed by the Government of India suggested the inclusion of society useful productive work that is SUPW at the school stage. The 1977-78 Committee on Vocational Course at the plus 2 stage headed by Malcolm S. Adisheshaya reviewed the vocational courses and suggested guidelines for introducing changes in the vocational stream. National Policy on Education in the year 1986, which provided a new direction to the curriculum. It envisages curriculum as an important instruction in realizing the ideals of society as enshrined in the constitution. The visible phase of reforms in curriculum consists of changes in the syllabi and textbooks but the invisible phase is far more complex. Even in the limited context of syllabi and textbook, popular perception of curricular reforms focuses on revision, updating or improvement. It is seldom recognized and expected that curricular reforms may require a deeper redesigning of pedagogic relations and may therefore require a longer gestation period before their impact is felt. The Indians case of recent curricular reforms has both these phases. The formulation of national curricular, fa curricular framework in the year, in the year 19, 2005 by the NCRT initiated a vast debate across the country on priorities and problems regarding how knowledge is selected and represented across the school curriculum and, to, and on how it is handled by teachers in the classroom. The new syllabi and textbooks brought out by NCRT since 2006 have deepened this debate and many other initiatives have enabled the debate to be absorbed and pursued at different levels of administration in the states. Many states have decided to adopt the new textbook. Several others have created their own, negotiating the NCF perspective with the help of NCRT's exemplar material. The National Council for Teacher Education in the year NCTE, the organization statutorily responsible for teacher education, has started reviewing the curriculum of teacher training followed in different states. This exercise is being guided by the pedagogic pers perspective articulated in the NCF 2005 and the legal framework of the Right to Education Act, RTE. Curriculum and pedagogy are at the heart of RTE's goal. Uh, RTE's goals of achieving universal, universality of elementary education while ensuring gender parity and equality among all social groups in an inclusive classroom environment. These goals cannot be achieved by changes in the syllabus and textbooks alone. Yet another major aspect of NCERT's vision of curricular reform is the identification of two curricular, critical curricular aspects on which the nature and quality of learning depends. These are reading and mathematics. By focusing on the early primary grades, NCRT's research and training in these two key areas will enable the larger system to overcome a long-term academic deficit. Finally, a great deal of attention is being paid to improving assessment and evaluation. The focus was on enabling teachers to make assessment and record keeping an aspect of teaching. National Education Policy 2020 is the first education policy of the 21st century and aims to address the many growing developmental imperatives of our country. This policy proposes the revision and revamping of all aspects of the education structure, including its regulation and governance, to create a new system that is aligned with the aspirational goals of 21st century education, including SDG 4, while building upon India's tradition and traditions and value systems. The National Education Policy lays particular emphasis 
on the development of the creative potential of each individual. It is based on the principle that education must develop not only cognitive capacities, both the foundational capacities of literacy and numeracy and higher order cognitive capacities such as critical thinking and problem solving, but also social, ethical and emotional capacities and dispositions. National Education Policy 2020 lays particular emphasis on the development of the creative potential of each individual. It is based on the principle that education must develop not only in the cognitive capacities, but both the functional capacities of literacy and numeracy and higher order cognitive capacities such as critical thinking and problem solving, but also social, ethical, emotional and capacities, emotional capacities and dispositions. When curriculum for a course is prepared for the first time, educationists and educational experts in curriculum designing play a very significant role. However, many agencies of curriculum development take part in the exercise of improving the curriculum through periodical revisions of which the role of individuals like teachers, headmasters, administrators of the state education department as well as organizations such as SCRT, NCRT, UGC, NCTE, NEPA, etc. are networthy and at international level the UNESCO. The other agents of development are teachers, principals, management and education department. In summary, the presentation and non-representation of social groups in curriculum planning impact the inclusivity, cultural sensitivity and educational equity in the Indian context. A well-designed uh, inclusive curriculum should actively seek to represent the diversity of India's social fabric to provide more enriching educational experience for all students.